Okay, this is the post lab for the gas laws, a rate of reaction, um, also, known, also known as the Alka Seltzer lab. So, the idea is to start understanding the gas laws and the rate of reactions. And sometimes I do the sodium hydroxide and aluminum first, and sometimes I do the Alka Seltzer first. So, this is going to be in general things you need to pull out of this. Okay, so. If you're doing the foil in the sodium hydroxide lab, um, hopefully you were careful with the sodium hydroxide. It is a strong base. You learned that it was a highly exothermic reaction. And hopefully we did take some time actually to um, take one of the balloons and see if it would ignite on fire because you were producing hydrogen gas. Okay. Uh, a lot of times y'all have a lot of fun with this because you do different things with aluminum foil. Some of you guys just put the whole piece in there. Some of you guys really chop it down. Um, some of you are interested in, well, what if I have the shiny side out first versus the other side? Does it make a difference? So y'all do some different stuff to see what happens. Okay. Um, so there's that. Okay. And, and we asked some questions here. I also want you to experiment with you know, did you take time to figure out how to speed up the reaction, how to slow down a reaction, that kind of stuff. Okay. Then, um, the second part of it is the Alka-Seltzer lab. The Alka-Seltzer part is really a nice one for calculation work, blending our stoichiometry unit with our gas laws one. And so you were given an Alka-Seltzer tablet, you were given a balloon, and your job was to capture as much of the carbon dioxide gas as possible, measure the circumference, and then do your calculations with it. So, here are our calculations for the Alka-Seltzer lab, and they are also in the video for the lab as well. Okay, We always have to start off with a balance equation. Right? The first thing we have to do on here is we've got to find our limiting reagent. That's the first thing we have to do because we don't know how much of the tablet is sodium bicarbonate and how much of it is citric acid. We assume it's basically at a one-to-one -one ratio between the two. So then the question becomes, is there a limiting reagent? And so we do our conversion going from one to the other. And hopefully you discover that your limiting reagent is a sodium bicarbonate. Once we had that, um, we're supposed to do all our calculations with the sodium bicarbonate and not the citric acid. Now, I ran with my calculations from the video, and that's actually an error. So really, my calculations should be done with this. Okay, uh, we get our circumference, and we go back to geometry, and remember that circumference is pi d or 2 pi r. Once we have that, we find out what our c is. So we take our c, because we took our string, we measured the balloon, we do 2 pi r, we find out that r is, for this group, it was 2.94. Going back to geometry again, we got to use the volume equation. Volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay. And we find out that we got 106.49.45 centimeters cubed. Okay. Then we're going to use our ideal gas law. This is where we're starting to get into our gas law unit, PV equals NRT. We've seen this before in one of our other labs as well. We rearrange to get the N. N is equal to PV over RT. The only number that you have to put in here is this green number here, which is your volume. But your volume has to be in liters, so you have to take your number that you had earlier and divide by 1,000 or move the decimal in front by 3. The rest of these numbers stay where they are. Once I have that, I'm going to apply that number. That number is the amount of carbon dioxide. Now moles mean nothing to us, so we're going to convert them over to grams using 44.0, and I get 0 0.19 grams. Now, this is where my error occurs, because the theoretical yield should be done not with citric acid, but with the sodium bicarbonate. Okay. And that's where we fix that right here. So make sure you do yours with that. Okay. Um, 
Once you run that, you're going to find out what the maximum was that you could have produced. Okay. Let's see, and we said 84. Okay. So once you get that replaced, that's going to change this number here. Then um, that's how much we should have, in theory, been able to produce. So a little change from the video on that. So I actually get that I should have only been able to produce one point seven two. So this looks a little bit better than the two point two six. Okay. So we're going to replace this bottom number with one point seven two and zero point one nine divided by one point seven two times by a hundred tells me I only produce eleven. Point zero four percent of my gas total, um, and that could be lots of things. It may have been that you chose an Erlenmeyer flask that was too big, um, and so not all your CO2 came up valve into your balloon. Carbon dioxide is also readily um, dissolvable in water. That's where we get into the carbonic acid and um, the problems with the oceans. And that's also a possibility as well. So in your error report, you can't tell me that no errors occurred because I'm going to guarantee that there were errors. And I want you thinking about those errors as a chemistry student, not just because Sally messed up and didn't do everything right or Joe forgot to get the right chemicals. Why did you really not get 100% on your theoreto, on your percent yield? Okay. Great job. Live long and prosper.